Hi folks, welcome to another edition of Ascension Outdoors. I'm Lyle Johnson. And I'm Goosey Guys. From South Louisiana, I guess I should explain. Looks like the kind of home for my kind of man. We were fishing the bayou stream. Dreaming from dream to dream Flipping on what mama nature stored Yeah, you won't believe the things I saw On old Lake Marapon Mama nature, you're gonna drive us all insane For the rustle of their wings in that cold December wind Brings me back to the banks of Marapal Ascension Outdoors is brought to you by Lane's Jewelry and Design on New River offering custom jewelry design along with in-house cleaning and repair. Snow Seafood and Steakhouse on Airline Highway serving great food since 1971. Roland J. Robert Distributor, serving customers with petroleum and petroleum products since 1924, along with super stops located throughout the region. Veyron Smoked Sausage uses the original Louisiana recipe from 1938 to produce the best smoked sausage, andouille, green onion, and smoked boudin around Ascension Power. See this man? He has no character. See this sausage? That's Veyron Smoked Sausage. It has character. Made with an original Louisiana recipe and slow smoked with hickory. Veron Smoked Sausage. Sausage with character. All right, folks, like always, our show is brought to you by Lane's Diamond Jewelry and Design, located on East Century Street, right in Gonzales, by the Airline Highway. And you know it's October, so it's getting kind of close. Oh, we're getting time to buy that jewelry for Christmas That's or something right. like that. Look, today we're over here at Duck Roof Seafood and Boudin Sorrento. Uh, you can see all of Part of the products that they have here right now is a bunch of delicious food right it's there. It's kind of hard to keep from getting in it. Oh, no you know, doubt. we got, yeah. we got to wait a little while. Now, there's a lot of options here, too. One thing I want to talk about a little bit right now, uh, all you hunters out there right now, they're, in, they're going to be doing wild game processing this year. Uh, you know, so that goes along with everything else they go, got going this year at Duck Roofs and Sorrento. But, uh, you know, it's the time of the year when seafood takes another – Another change, like right. right now, you're getting into the holidays, oyster dressings, uh, seafood gumbos, things of some of that nature is coming about, you know, to the holiday season right. a little bit right now. Hey, look, and we, we got it up on the screen, uh, his uh, menu for the uh, mm -hmm. wild game processing. But, uh, you know, and it's a concern with a lot of people about getting their own meat back. Right, here sure. a lot of yeah, time. Right. So that's one of the well, things you, you guarantee here is you go, what you bring in is what you're going to take home. Right, that, you that, know, that. and uh, their prices are very reasonable. Like I said, you can uh, um, come here and talk to them about it, and uh, they'll do hogs, they'll do deer. You know, they'll process just about anything. So, uh, uh, but look, I've had an opportunity to sample just about everything they fix here, right. and. Uh, those potatoes right there with the bacon wrapped around it is, is way up on the list. And uh, I recently got a chance to test their uh, crawfish etouffee pistolets. And I'm telling you, I tried to get some people to drive from Stevensville here to get some this weekend. And so uh, they, they are very good. You know, it's called seafood and boudin, but they got a lot of other stuff here. They got prepared stuff that you can... Sure. Stuff chickens, stuff everything you can just put in, the, in your I see a smoked cooking. rabbit up there. That's right. That's kind of uh, new to the uh, scene, too. That's great gumbos, they tell me, and, and things of that nature. That's so, right. Uh, and look, we got some good sponsors on our show, and all of them are local, sure. own businesses, every one of them. This is another one. Brandon Faulkner, uh, support our local businesses. You know, they support our show. We, we'd like for y'all to support them as well. You know, our fans are great. And uh, had an opportunity this weekend to uh, MC for the first time, Jacob Dugas Memorial Bass Classic. And uh, heard about it, you know, ever since it started. You know, never did participate in it and never did go to the weigh-ins, but uh, I made my first one this past, uh, the 19th annual that he just had out of Dwaron's in Stevensville. And, uh, you know, Jacob uh, actually went to school at East Ascension. Oh, really? uh, he, he's I a Spartan, that's right. And uh, 
he started fishing local, you know, the tournament circuit, local tournaments, and, and ended up fishing two of the Bassmaster Central Opens, finishing the money one time out of the two, and that's when the cancer hit. And uh, he, he stayed strong to the end, and uh, the tournament benefits uh, dreams come true, right. which is a great thing for me for those kids to get to do something that they thought they'd probably never get to do. So uh, anyway, and my brother Greg was there, and he pulled out his fishing app, and it, out of 100, one to 100, Saturday was a 14, which is terrible. No big feeding periods and right. all that, but somebody forgot to tell the fisherman and the bass, because uh, Bill and Chance Shelby, father-son team, had five bass, 1788. They also won big bass with a 540, and uh, Willie Couch the second and the third, which is a very common name called out in those tournaments right there. They, they had second place with 1696, and uh, Philip Waggis Pack and Ted Mayon Jr. took third with uh, 1630. Cody Kelly and Hanson Chaney had 1586 for fourth. Jared O'Quinn, Lenny Acosta had 1550, so that was five good very nice strings yeah, for the top that. five. And so we got opening hunting season over Yeah, it's now. coming on coming on strong right now. Look, a couple things I want to remind you on. Ammunition is in short supply. Don't wait for the day you get ready to go hunting to go start buying ammunition. You may want to try to get it online. I know a lot of people are looking for different caliber rifle bullets or even shotgun shells. Right. Uh, it, manufacturing is just not up to speed right now to where other times in this country that it was. And hopefully we hopefully this year here, go ahead and get over and we can go on back to our normal way of life. Right. But uh, that's something to keep in mind. I know some people that, you know, the day before they go hunting, they go look for some shells or something. And Thank God. You got to be running around looking. <laughs> so uh, that, look, sight your rifles in. Go out, take your time doing that. Wear you some ear protection. I wish I had done that more back in my younger days. Uh, wear you some ear protection. Make sure those rifles are shooting good. Uh, get When you kill something, when you, when you do harvest an animal, if you want the best quality of that meat, take care of, take care of it right then and there. Get the intestines removed as soon as you can. Get it on ice as soon as you can. You know, if you bring it to one of these wild game, game play, uh, processes, such as our uh, duck roost right here in Sorrento, look, it, it's going to make a whole bunch of difference on how the quality of that meat's going to taste. If you take care of it, if you leave it in the back of a truck all day long, sitting in the hot sun, that ain't good. Yeah. So you got to take care of things like that. So uh, keep that in mind, and, and, and we're going to be giving with you all throughout the hunting seasons and different tips and uh, information on different things that come about. All right, we're going goose hunting right now yeah. with a uh, Spoonbill Adventure Guide Service down in West Louisiana, Gordon Hall Power, and a uh, pretty nice time. We yeah, had. we had a good time down there. Look, if you're looking for a waterfowl hunt out in West Louisiana, you know, uh, you can darn near wear your tennis shoes. I wouldn't do that, but you need to wear some knee boots or something. But uh, Pretty comfortable. Yeah, pretty comfortable. Uh, uh, excellent. I, I haven't been there on a bad trip yet. Right. And I, I know you can do it, but uh, if you're looking for some waterfowl hunting, ducks or geese out in West Louisiana, or uh, need to take a trip down there, Spoonbill Adventures, check this out. Get all you need for your day on the water. What you got to do is pay for reading when they get home. I'll pull the fuel. Ice. Everything that you need to take a good, safe day, nice day out on the water. Shoot that one up top. No! Here! Now here! I don't want to flow over there. We'll talk a little bit about it. I don't think they do. We just missed our first shot of the day. One of them come in. <clears throat> I thought I made a pretty good shot of it, but evidently not. I shot a couple of times, loud shot. What you shot? I shot it? three times. Three times already. <laughs> well, well, they got us five, five to nothing right now. In this That's right. Case. It's foggy, kind of slow morning right now, but there's, there's a few geese flying around, it seems like. And we was talking to Gordon a while ago, it seems like uh, this, this kind of hunting right here. 
picks up a little bit as the day, the morning goes on. Seems like the little flocks of geese start breaking off from where they were and coming right in different places. Seems like it's getting ready to start happening a little bit. Of, a little bit more action now than what they had earlier. Yeah. But uh, that's some exciting hunting right there. It's, it's foggy. Gordon, did uh, what, what's your feel on what's going on right now with them? Oh, they need a. They need to be flying lower than they were in the fog. I know that. Yeah. They fly pretty high for a foggy day in yep. general. Yeah. Goose hunting is tough, man. And look, it's late in the season. It's, it's 2020 right now, January. And uh, Just as hot as it was when you were here for teal season. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it sure is. Yeah. <laughs> Same but, uh, temperature, yeah. We're, we're going to hang in here a while. I'm sure we get another shot or two, but we got to make our shots count. That's, that's, that's the deal right here for sure. was in there with them? Yeah. I've done. Come on, fetch it up. Fetch it up. Got him that time. We done a little better that time, no doubt. Yeah. That was about here. 12 of them come by. We got three of them. Yeah. So we nice block. They almost. <laughs> for two on that one. <laughs> You're right, bro. Yeah. Good shooting. Good shooting, y'all. Good calling, man. That one kept going. Great job. Well, we got three of them. Two, two three, them. huh? Yeah, I killed my the third shot I made. I killed that one way down there. That one there, ain't it? Yeah. Come on, Nelly. Yeah, that's me. <coughs> Phone's on vibrating, it's still going. Have a long. <coughs> that's a good dog right there. I know you get it. Here. Whoa! 
Over. Whoa! Right there. Dumbass. Back. Come on. Here. Yeah, you're right. Here. That wing's over my eyes, you can't see. What? <laughs> <laughs> that bird's back. Come on. All right. What we got here, really, if you look at the, the little Ross geese that yeah. Miles got, that's the lesser of snows. This is the true snow goose right here. Yeah. My account. This right here and this eagle head, this blue, is the same species. But you can tell the difference in the beaks by so much in the size of the bird. Those little Rosskies got a little bit of short beaks. Right. And a regular snow goose got a great big beak. There's some now different characteristics with them. I ain't really that for me. It was been a while since I've killed any geese. Right. But uh, we used to hunt them quite a bit. But uh, that's exciting hunting. It's big game. Big game uh, right. bird hunting, really. It is. <laughs> it, it's quite a sight to see him call him, call him in and he calls That's for right. the shot, and you stand up in that hill right there in front of you. It is pretty intense, that's for sure. But that's the difference. I hear, some right? more. I hear a few more of them up that way, so. Getting kind of close to Yeah, we might all be getting down. Got quite a mess of them right now, partner. Yeah. <laughs> We're working on them. Yeah. Now. Working on them pretty it's, good. That was a pretty big flock we just shot. Right? Yeah. Gordon, if somebody wants to get in touch with you, man, I mean, uh, uh, for the goose hunting, typically, when, when I know the season's long, you know, it comes from November all the way to January now, and any time, depending on weather and migration and all, things can change. So, uh, typically, for a goose hunt, when is it typically the best? I mean, uh, it's probably early January, late December, early January. Yeah. Be about the best, that I'd say. And the ducks? Yeah, that too. That, that mm -hmm. too, yeah. You know, this is this is easy hunting for us. Now, these guys work, like, they, they work to, to do what they got to do. It's easy for people like us to come there. Because I, I called him yesterday, I said, what kind of boots? Knee boots. Yeah. You know, that typically ain't the way that we used to duck hunt or goose hunt. Should I say, do a lot more work for us. Because they do the work up front. That's why you pay the money. But I tell you what, it's well worth it. That That is a... a exciting experience to, to witness right there. Those flocks of geese coming in as well as, as the duck hunting down here. I mean, so there, there's a lot of different, oh, yeah. there's a lot of different variables going on. It doesn't necessarily have to get cold here. It just has to get cold up north. Sure, right. sure. I mean, but we talked about that before. During teal season, he, he, he's happy when the cold fronts don't come. Let it be 95 degrees and hot in September, and he's gonna have, he's gonna have teal here. That's gonna happen. You get a couple cold fronts through, it may move them out. So it, if you it, don't have birds to replace the birds that are here, they're gonna go to Mexico. Sure. So they sure will. That's why I'd rather no cold front during till season. Right now we need cold fronts, but we ain't getting them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, at, at, at the particular point in the season we in right now, I believe you got one week left here. Yes, sir. Yeah. You ought to be about war by now, though. Oh yeah. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> I, I bet. Ready so, for a nap. Yeah, I bet right. you are. All right. So all right. You are a craw fisherman too, also, right? Yeah, I'm a wholesaler. All right, you are a dealer and a wholesaler, all right. Big concentration of geese, like there's a field up that way, and you know, there's a big concentration of them. And we kind of like in between all that. What causes all them to go to one field like this? Is it just safe harbor? 
Uh, they were roosting over here. Actually, they were roosting in both of them, flying back and forth, but they got food in there too, so they kind of roost and feed in the same food? field. Like That's just the, there in the rice field. Grass and stuff? It's rice. Rice, really? And then when it is, I, I, they see each other in there, it's very hard to deal with them like that because they want to go. I mean, that's a pretty safe haven for them right there. You can see them funneling down in there. You can't see that now because it's falling. On a clear day, you see that. But you can hear them all hollering back there. We're way in between two of those roof fields. Oh, they got four back here. Oh, yeah. Oh. These are the birds, people, that, that, that they rate, they have a conservation order late on in the season where you can actually hunt them with electric calls and stuff after the season oh. is over. But these are the birds that years ago, back, I don't know, it must have been 15, 20 years ago now, Come they on, made it legal to, hey, uh, fetch it up. the limit on. went up to 20 on yeah. them. They were eating Come out on. their breeding grounds. Come they on. come from the Arctic. This bird comes from a long ways, come on. a couple thousand miles, right. man. Yeah. Arctic Circle is where they actually come from. So. Look at this one. They raise a limit on it yeah, in, in yeah. the effort of hunters to help control their populations because they don't have a Hold long growing up. time up there. Oh, so, that one's belly up? With that? Yeah, that's a pretty one there. That's a, that's a, young, that's a young one right there, right? Mm -hmm. Or is it just a phase? It's, it's not Ron, completely. It's a phase. The phase is not completely young. But this here looks like a, a good mature bird here. But they, they were eating out their breeding grounds. Yeah. There's not a long growing season up there, so that's why the limit was raised. So. Yeah. And they doing fine. There's still a bunch of them. Yep. There's still a bunch of them. They got a bunch of them in blind. Matter of fact, this right here is brought to you by Veyron Sausage. Try some of that Veyron Rondo with, with one of these right here. I guarantee you won't be mistaken for the wrong thing right there. All right. 17 snow and blue in one speck? Yes, right. Garden hot ball. Spoonbill Adventures. Oh, appreciate the day out, Master Bell. That's by far the best goose hunt I've been on in my life. It's been great, man. You know, uh, it did start off real good. We missed the first two oh, yeah. easy shots, and it didn't look like we were getting nothing going, but finally they come, bro. And they oh, did. yeah. Who is young man? He does such a good job calling that's those right. geese set up so well. Uh, that pit blind right there, you know, that's what you kind of need to hunt these things. They, right. they, 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 they haggle around there and they kind of going kind of slow and they can see you so well if you ain't set up right and but but man I, I i don't know i'm sure you had some maybe what you call bella hunts this year and this but you can't hardly beat what what we just did today i can promise you that right now yes sir thank you all i'll tell you what man that, that goose hunting that, that's like big game bird hunting right that's there. right yeah <laughs> yeah it's a little different cut from teal hunting or duck hunting right things of that nature that is really exciting right there to do uh, 
I love it. I'm glad we had the opportunity to make that trip with Gordon right. down there. That was that was fun. And, and look, we could have got a lot more. We we left and it right. was really flying at that time. The <laughs> fog was starting to break and they were diving under decoys as we were leaving. Right. Look, speaking of Spoonbill Adventure, this is opening on a teal hunt down there with Gordon Hoffpower uh, this past year. Uh, there were 10 blinds and the, uh, the hunters killed 440 teal out of those 10 blinds. Oh, and I, I want to say great. that was a limit for everybody, uh, right. six apiece right there. So uh, that was a, it's been a great teal season so far, and down there, they really did good down there in uh, Spoonbill Adventure, yeah. for sure. And look, it's going to be a good year. If everything stays the same and we don't get too much water and all, it's going to be good. Check him out, Spoonbill Adventures. Yeah. All right, next picture is another teal hunt opening mm -hmm. morning from guys from uh, our area here. Down in Venice, Cole Malone saw on a big gang, Ben Parker, Brant Baker, Colton King, Landon Lure, Dylan Brock, Brennan Edmond, one of our old camera people, Reed Babin, Zane G Zephyr, and Griffin Edwards posed with their limit until they killed 60 of them in Venice on the opening morning. Pretty creative, too, the way they took that picture right, right there with the 60. <laughs> they put the 60 up there. That's a, that's a limit for 10 people right, right there is what they had right there. That's pretty neat. There's another limit. Yeah, here's another limit right here of uh, Cole Malone's old Ben Parker, Cole King with a uh, limit of 30 bass. They caught it. Now, they caught that the opening weekend of Venice. That was part of the, in, that was in that past picture that you just saw. Right. Uh, down in Venice, we've been there before. You know, you getting down there right now. You get down there where you flip them canes. I hear that the uh, redfish are coming in Venice right now pretty good. And yeah. uh, a couple guys I'm working with uh, live down that way, and, and the trout's coming in. Uh, big yellow fins, big ones. I'm talking about 150, 172 pounders, yeah. stuff like that. They're catching right now. Uh, you look up. Place to go down south. Venice is a good place to go. That's right. Down. That's a sports and paradise. Oh, down Lord, there. that's great right now. <laughs> All right, next picture right here is Danny and Monica Burke caught these beautiful striped bass on vacation fishing Lake Hamilton in Arkansas using big live shiners for bait, and uh, they caught quite a few of them. Uh, mm -hmm. They uh, landlocked sort of uh, those uh, hybrid stripers, sure. you know, where they don't, mm -hmm. uh, they can't reproduce, but uh, that's some beautiful fish. That's they some nice there. ones right there. Yeah. Look, at, there were times at Venice you can catch them at this time. Real Eastern you know, striper. Yeah, yeah, real Easterns. I've oh, done yeah. it a bunch of times. Been Without a little while since I've seen them there, though, but... But those guys that fish down there, uh, those some of those guides and all tell me they, they still run into them every now and then. Yeah. Uh, here's some grandkids that got treated to a gator hunt in Marlboro Swamp, which ain't far from where we at right That's now. Right. Maybe just a couple miles, uh, if that far. Uh, they was with their Paul Paul Robbie. Uh, they each got a gator for themselves. And left to right in this picture is Paul Paul Robbie Savoy Jr., Cameron Dean, Aubrey Savoy, Bryson Delone, and Ethan Delone. Well, that's a happy group right there, I that's tell you. Right. What. That's just the right size alligators, too, right there. That's perfect. <laughs> Those I'll kids had a good time. for the day that this state, as many alligators they got, sells a permit to you, sell you a license to let you harvest one of these right. alligators that we got out there. Now, that, that situation is really getting out of control. We yeah, all know it. Too many. Uh, yeah. We darn sure need to each be able to get an alligator right. if we choose to do so with right. the number they got right now. Right. I wish that would come about. All right, here's two more grandkids. That's, they mine. Uh, Parker and Justice Johnson caught their first fish, a couple of brim fishing with their daddy Wesley in a pond in their neighborhood all the way in Kingwood, Texas. That's where they live. And uh, I think they caught about 15 that day. Well, I'll tell you that, what, one of the them first that he's holding right there is a pretty nice fish. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's Justice. Nice yeah, they did it. They did pretty right good, there, bro, yeah. without that's a doubt. That's good. Preston Heath pictured here with Attorney General Jeff Landry uh, with some alligators they harvested on uh, on the hunt with Dream Dream Hunt Foundation and Dreams Come True. Yeah, so, right. uh, hey, congratulations with that. I'm sure yeah, Preston right. enjoyed that trip with uh, Attorney Landry there. He's a, he's a pretty good outdoorsman. Yeah. Man. Yeah, that, that's the kind of politicians we need, I guarantee you. That's right. They'll believe that. <laughs> All right, we got another Preston here. Nine-year-old Preston Martin from Suffolk, Louisiana, was down there with us this past weekend when we hunted again uh, with his group bag of uh, on a teal hunt with Spoonbill Adventures. And uh, he killed a couple of them. I couldn't quite nail him down on exactly how many of them, but uh, he ran out of shell shooting them, so uh, he, he had a good time. So. Hey, look, folks, we appreciate y'all tuning in, man. We can use y'all pictures. The best way to get them to us is tag us on Facebook. Uh, you can send them to Ascension Outdoors at etail.net, but uh, we love to put y'all on. Look, come check it out. Dunkaroo Seafood, Sorrento, Louisiana. You won't be sorry you did. See y'all on the next Ascension Outdoors. <laughs>